Disruptive Conversations. And here we are today. Paula Rizzo is going to be coming on. If you haven't met Paula yet, your time has come to really meet someone who is just wonderful, thoughtful, has a tremendous amount of information to give us. Uh, Paula has already, she is so on this. Thanks, Shama, for coming on. You request, go live. Vilren Frank, Carly, hi, FitAmps Fitness, hi. Hello. Hey, there she is. Paula, hi. So Paula, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be introducing the show and then introducing you and then we are going to be ready to roll. So everyone, as they're coming on, we're giving you a second because we have got so much to talk about today that you want to hear and know and think about for yourself and for your lives. So welcome to Disruptive Conversations in which we meet with entrepreneurs, thought leaders, um, influencers, authors, educators, to really deep dive into the experiences that these women have needed to navigate and conquer in order to achieve their personal and professional success. And I'm Dr. Risa Riger, clinical psychologist, and I'm an expert in change. I help people make positive change at any point. Now, you can't have positive change without disruption. You need to disrupt thought, feeling, belief, behavior in order to create your 10.0 life. And that's what this series of conversations is all about. And as I said, Paula Rizzo is here today. She is sharing the screen with me. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her bio. As with incredible women I have on, I have to read it. There's so much. And so Paula is an Emmy award-winning TV producer. And she is the author of Listful Thinking and Listful Living, in addition to new book that she's working on, but work in progress. Paula also is a media training coach. She is a speaker. She's a LinkedIn learning instructor. If you haven't heard her, you really need to go on and hear what she's doing. She's the host of the live stream show Inside Scoop. And if that wasn't enough, there is, there's more. She is the creator of the popular online training, Media Ready Author. Paula, welcome. And no matter what I have already said, what is it that I didn't say that you'd like us to know about? Uh, well, that I, I mean, I am a list maker. Yet. If you don't, if you don't get that from the bio, right? From uh, two books about productivity and list making, lists have really served me very well through the years. I have to say, it's been a a great connector. There's lots of list makers around the world, and uh, I'm uh, I'm thrilled to to chat with you today. Fantastic. Well, the way we're going to just jump right in because we have, there's so much for us to share with the community is that, um, Paula, what did you need to disrupt in yourself in order to achieve the personal and professional success that you are at? At this yeah, point well, in time, you know, obviously as you more said, time. Yeah, I was a television producer for a very long time, close to two decades, working in TV news in New York City, both in local and national news. And, you know, that was my whole life as a journalist. And I started a blog years ago, about 10 years ago, listproducer.com, where I was talking about lists and productivity. And from there, it, that morphed into my books. And so, you know, there was really like a, a, a shakeup that happened. It was a fun side project. And then I started to realize, oh, this could be a, another life. This could be another career. This is something else that I, I can be doing. I can leave TV news uh, and, I, and my steady job. I can become an entrepreneur. I can start doing media training. I can start coaching people and authors who are talking about their books and getting them out in the world. I can help to train them. I'm doing it for myself and I've also helped other people do it. So that entire part of my life Life was just a huge shakeup to go from, you know, someone who, who was working in TV for a long time to say, okay, I'm going to work for myself and I'm going to try and, and see how this goes. And, and that was, 
it had to happen because the thing that had sustained me for so long, my full-time job, was starting to hold me back. I wasn't able to take on, you know, opportunities that were popping up or speaking engagements or, you know, creative things, uh, uh, you know, partnerships and things because I was still working full time. So I had to let that go. I had to disrupt that part of my life to move on to, to this part. That's, that's a huge, that's a huge disruption. And, you know, one of the things that happens, and we know this about social media, you come on social media and everybody looks like they oh. kind of, you know, came in and things just happened and you woke up in the morning and there it was also, it was not nice and neat and, and you kind of went from one thing to the other without any, yeah. um, without any pushback or, or big disappointment. So could you address how that, a long what that looked like for you? You know, change does not happen overnight. I mean, maybe there's something that happens. You get laid off or, you know, something that's immediate, but the evolution doesn't happen right away. And it's something that, you know, when people come to me and they say, oh, how'd you leave your full-time job? How'd you start your own business? How'd you do all these things? I said, I started it, you know, 10 years before I actually did it or, you know, eight years or five years or whatever it was. It had been little bits and pieces to, to have the runway there, to be able to use my skills in different ways, to test things out in a safe way. So I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna you know, leave my, my full, full paycheck right away. It really took time and it was very deliberate and slow for me because I'm a planner. So I was not going to just jump right away. I needed to be able to plan a little bit and feel comfortable. You'll never feel comfortable, but at least you'll feel a little bit a little bit better um and i think that's that's the thing it's gradual it takes a long time to make these to make these changes mm -hmm. i'm just thinking about you as a little as you know little paula and uh, were you like one of those um one of those kids in high school who had you know had their lists of things to do and their study sheets and you know keep yes, kept very your stuff curious. organized. I mean, I think that's why I became a journalist. I'm very curious about a lot of things, but I would keep a lot of lists. I get it from my dad. He's he is the list maker in the family, and so I think watching him and seeing how how he sort of organized things, I was like, ha, huh, this works, you know. And and school obviously with with projects and things. And then once I became a, a television producer, it was really the only way to keep track of all of the moving parts of live TV. Um, and even, you know, when I was uh, not working directly in live television anymore, but just producing videos, there's so many parts to it. There's so many deadlines involved. There's so many um, different people who need to be involved in the process that you need the list. So it just served me really well through my entire life. <laughs> so being a TV producer, being a woman television producer at it that time, what exciting, was that like? I have to say, you know, um, I, for a long time I worked uh, through people from New York City at Channel 11, uh, WPIX for a long time. I worked uh, at CBS too. Uh, you know, so you have a front row seat to history in a lot of ways, which is, is really uh, exciting. I learned a lot. Um, and then from there I went on to, to work at Fox News Channel as a senior health producer for over a decade. And and you know, there I was able to really specialize in health and wellness, which was really fun um, because it was, you know, for mm -hmm. selfish reasons, there were things that I could learn. There were things that I care about that even still today, I take with me things that I learned about, you know, uh, meditation and mindfulness and, and stories that I had done you know, many, many years ago that at the time were new, you know, and now it's like everybody's talking about meditation, everybody's talking about yoga and, and you know, all of these things. Um, but it was it was very fun, uh, you know, as far as being a woman in, in the industry, you know, it, it, it was difficult sometimes to to break through in certain ways. Um, but I was not the first and I was not the only. So for me, I, it, I feel like it was a, the a, a paved paved way was there already. I mean, not in the way that it should be, but at least there were others who had come before me. There were others to my side, you know, with me who who were there. So it wasn't only I was the only woman in the in the you know uh, room. Um, so it was a lot of um, people who had come before me and continue, you know, continue to 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 live on and and uh, you know pave the way for other women journalists. Yeah. So what is it like, you know, you were in a job 
right? And then you're, then you make the shift, you make the transition and the disruption to become an entrepreneur and be in your own space and be in your own business. And I'm just wondering, uh, at that point in time, when you're, when you are your business, what's the shift that happens from having these external structures and these external timelines to being well no one tells me that i have to be you know in the office or in the studio at this time or that time wait a minute you know i can get up at all these different times how was that how was that you know transition for you what did that look because like because i was used to so much structure and i was used to having you know the constraints of deadlines i work really well that way it's why i've been was able to have you know a wonderful mm -hmm. career in tv mm -hmm. news because i strive when I have those sorts of, you know, boundaries and things. So I had to create them for myself. And I, I, I didn't do it initially because you don't want to, because you think, oh, it's a free for all. Let me do whatever I want. Now it's, I'm free finally. And without them, I was completely burnt out. I, after my first year of working for myself, you know, I was doing calls with people at any time. I had my calendar open. Anybody was able to, you know, put, put some time on my calendar. And I said, wait a minute, let me back up here. When I worked in TV news, I never did that. I was very intentional about what times I did meetings, what times I went out in the field and did shoots, what times I did uh, studio interviews, all of that stuff. So I said, I need to have some sort of structure there. And that structure actually was, was part of my second book, Listful Living, about really creating intentional scheduling for myself, blocking time throughout the week of when I'll do meetings, when I, you know, what's my non-negotiable time? When is my writing time? So Fridays I have always held for writing. And that is a day that I try not to put meetings. It doesn't always work, but I really intend to do that. Uh, same for Mondays. Mondays I, I really hold to set up for the week and to do any sort of connection. Uh, we're getting back to meeting people in, in person again. So any kind of you know meetings that I would do, I try to do those on Mondays. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I keep for uh, you know, meetings with clients or speaking engagements if I can. So for me, in my mind, having that structure really helps. And also tapping into my own personal productivity style, which is something I also talk about in the book, understanding and knowing when I work best. I'm not a morning person. So I'm not stacking you know, all of these mm. things in the morning. I like a slow morning. I like to wake up. I like to read the newspaper. I like to do some yoga. I like to drink my tea. You know, I need that first before I can then dive in and start doing other things. And I think what you're saying is so important. And I just want to kind of take this and, and highlight this, which is that, that you are, you can empower yourself to create your schedule in yeah, a way and it's that, that makes that sense also for do you. In corporate America. When I was working for, you know, a TV station, you can't always have so much flexibility, but I was able to do it even in, in that. Um, so anyone, you know, to say, oh, well, she works for herself. And so of course she can, you know, decide and all that. I was doing it before. I just forgot that I was doing it when I started working for myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a, there's a sense that if you're working for yourself that you just yeah. have to have 100% availability. That there's, mm, mm. Yeah, Can you, you feel just like say you, a little bit more be, about that? You're the only one, really. You know, in the beginning, I didn't have an assistant. It was just me working. And so I felt like, oh, if I don't do all of these things all, of, uh, all the time, who's working on the business? But, you know, with time, it, you, you come to understand that if you, if you don't take a break, step back. If you don't, mm -hmm. um, you know, see what's in front of you at the in the big picture, it's it's never going to work, you're going to continue to burn out, you're going to continue to um, just do too much, take on too much and never truly be good at anything. And that's the issue, you know, you really need to hone in and say, Okay, what is my zone of genius? What where do I need to personally be that no one else can be this interview, you and I are the only two people who can do this interview, we've had people help us to set it up and get everything, you know, ready but this has to right. be me i have to be here right now there's nobody else i can i can outsource this to you know so it's those types of things really running through yes. your mind and saying okay what are those things that i have to be the one to do and what are the things that i don't have to be the one to do and how can i get help how can i uh you know empower other people to do what they're really great at actually mm -hmm. 
So Paula, you know, in, and this is something that women can sometimes have difficulty with, is really looking at, and I love how you say it so easily, zone of genius, and that you just, there wasn't a moment's hesitation. So could you share with us what, what you think sure. of I mean, as your zone of genius? For me, you know, being able to, to be creative. And one of the things that, that I wouldn't have said that before, you know, I would have said list making, I would have said, you know, writing TV scripts, I would have said, you know, all of these, but it, at the, the core of it is the creativity of it. And I need time to be able to do that. And when I'm doing some of the other things that are not so creative, uh, you know, I'm stunting my own growth. So the list do help me to be able to think through what are the things that I enjoy the most doing in my business, you know? And mm. You mean you can put enjoyment yes. into what do I enjoy important? most? Not what do I, what uh -huh. am I the best at? What am I, you know, what do I like? Whatever it's, what do I enjoy the most? And really checking in with myself after I do whatever it is that I do. After I do an interview like this, you know, I'll check in with myself and say, how did I like that? I always like it, you know, because I enjoy doing these things. So I try to, to say yes to these types of opportunities because I enjoy it, um, you know, and, and that's really helpful too when you look at your business and you look to say, okay, where can I fill in the blanks? Where can I fill in the things that I don't like doing? Can I give it to someone else to do? Or does it need to happen at all? You know, maybe I don't need to work with those types of clients because I don't like that. And, and it's about being intentional and really making those lists and saying, okay, let me check in after I do each of these tasks. How do I actually feel? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love about what you're saying of, of many things, and I'm going to say something about how we met, which is also really important, is that you're, you know, you're going back into yourself. And so what happens is that there's something that I call, you know, an integrated decision. An integrated decision is one in which you, you know, you think about what you're doing, but you also really tap into what it is that your internal experience is like. And that you integrate those two to be able to come to more of an integrated decision. And so that it really yes. feels in alignment. Absolutely. With who you and it's are. important and it, it does take time. It's not something that you figure out overnight. You know, you do have to notice yourself and really check in and, and, and take notes on yourself. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like it's part of your list making process. And that part of your list making process gives you the opportunity, it, you know, and, and I'd love to hear more about that. I'm sure everybody else does too of really spending that time Definitely. With and you. you know i think a lot of people think about lists as the to-do list which i love the to-do list nothing against the to-do list but it's not the only list you know i do keep a lot of feelings lists when i feel something i'm writing down mm -hmm. just a, just a bunch of words just whatever comes to mind and i'll just write them down just so that in that moment i remember exactly how i felt when i was doing whatever it was uh and i find that to be really helpful i you know in my first book listful thinking i had interviewed a woman who wrote a to be become list. So the list was a list of things that she wanted to become. She wanted to become a better listener. She wanted to become a better friend. She wanted, you know, and so she had that list of intentions. And when you write something down, you're 33% more likely to do it. And so being able to, to really just have that paper hold your intention is really helpful. Yeah. I think the other really important, helpful piece about lists is that we have so much detail in our lives. It's, it can be paralyzing and overwhelming. And of course, then go, you know, have this goes into avoidance. But the thing about the list and having to do that kind of thinking and remembering, I mean, this is just like a little neuroscience moment, bing, bing, is that it, it, when we t write down lists, it, we take it out of our prefrontal cortex and move it more into the basal ganglion, more into another part of our brain that mm -hmm. is more of the rote part. And when you don't write things down, you need to continually give yourself yeah. prompts to remember. So writing things down, um, and maybe this is a piece of your list writing that maybe you may not have known before, but writing things down frees up the part of your brain that requires the most energy 
to go into things that give you more creativity, helps you in that space, and offloads it to another part of your brain that is more of the rote kind of piece. So you're really, you're increasing your energy and you're increasing your ability to think on higher levels because yeah, you're getting I've that part of your brain more bandwidth. exactly like that, but that's completely how it feels, you know? It really, <laughs> it feels like a total weight <laughs> and stress reduction because you don't have to remember to remember it. You've got yourself covered, and then you can go yes. ahead and move on to what you actually need to do. So, so I'm really happy that we're having this conversation <laughs> together. Um, and so how did this conversation come about? I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I remember and that um, Paula had written her first book, and this is many years ago now, um, and uh, and that I went to her book launch party, and I thought this is this is a really great woman. And uh, and I was looking at her book, and I thought, oh, you know, I know people who I think could be helped by this, and I'm going to start to introduce some of these some of these skills and you know exercises for people. And we, I, you know, I gave you some feedback. You said, let me know how it goes. Right, one sentence let me know how it goes and i hear that and i'm like okay i'm in good i'm in intention with paula so i write back i say this is how it went and you write ah, i'm so thank you for writing to me and then there was a lull and something came up and i needed your you know i wanted your thoughts and you were extraordinarily generous um, and we've had conversations since and it and so for people who are for people who step away from networking think about networking networking is your friend networking is about meeting having an open opportunity to learn something about someone and give yourself yeah, that opportunity to be curious lasting. you know as you said I mean that first book came out oh my gosh it's like eight years ago, it was a long time ago, something like that. And look, here we are now, eight years later, still talking, still having conversations. So, you know, there may be a lull here or there, but it's, this is why I love LinkedIn, because it's great to keep in contact with people and remember where you, where you found them first, um, you know, and, and I just love that. It, it's, it's, it has served me so well in my life and, uh, you know, professionally and personally to keep in touch with people, to check in, to see, you know, maybe you have a list of people that you want to check in with regularly. That is something you can be intentional about. What are you feeling passionate about? I, I am very excited about the novel that I'm working on. And because it is truly creative, it is very different than writing nonfiction, which I feel has been very similar to all the writing that I've ever done in my career. You know, as a TV producer, writing for TV news, it's very much like, you know, what are the facts? What are the things that, that we need to know? How do we get it across in the shortest amount of time? Uh, there's a very uh, linear way that it's written. You know, you have a book proposal with like, he's, here's all your chapters, here's what it's gonna be about, here's who you interview, great. Fiction's not like that. It's a wild beast that I'm just now learning how to how to harness a bit. Um, I've been working on this book for three plus years, uh, and I'm learning, which is I I think that's one of my core values as well as besides curiosity, but is to learn, and I love the process, and I think that's important for people who want to. Write write a book, let's say, or, you know, to really understand the whole process of how this works. There's so many moving parts. It's publishing is so different from the world that I came from, from TV. It moves very slowly <laughs> and TV moves very fast. Uh, so being able to, to learn that. So I've, I found that to be um, fun and rewarding as I'm, as I'm learning and, and learning something new, but also something that is, is, you know, it feeds me. I, I really enjoy being creative in a different, in a totally different way than, than I had in thought that I would. Yes. And that certain, you know, we can get to certain points where we've done something true. and unless we shake it up in some respects, we can come to a point of internal saturation. Right. And so that we need to have something to spark new thinking something that just sparks us and reignites our you know our that kind of twinkle in your eye 
and you know i'll just you know share with you you know i'm yes. in the midst of a book proposal getting toward or towards the end than not and man uh, talk about take you know kind of like harnessing the beast and learning about a whole other world and it's uh it's its own thing and of course the day is going to come where i'm going to you know kind of uh ping you yes, and say right, of course. Well, I'm happy. <laughs> I live for that day. I live for that day. Um, so, Paula, what is your? Oh my next gosh! Well, my next disruption, disruption is I'm moving. Uh, I have been, you know, living. I I grew up in New York. New York. Um, my husband and I lived in Miami during the pandemic for three years, which was wonderful. And we thought we wanted to stay there and we decided we don't want to stay there. We want to come back to New York. So we're back in New York and we've sold our apartment and now we're moving to Long Island where we're both originally from. So we're going from the city to the suburbs. I'm a little nervous about it because I really do love the city life. Uh, we just got a car and we hadn't had a car for 10 years. So it's a very strange kind of, you know, shake up. Uh, I think it'll be good because there's a lot of things that we need that we can't really have in the city, like space and a parking spot and a washer dryer, you know, so <laughs> it will be good. <laughs> that, you know, you can have a tree that you can actually walk to mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. in your own yes. space. That's another, you know, that's true, another yes. possibility there. So, you know, there's so much that you teach. Uh, I'm just going to take a moment to make sure to let everybody know that, you know, first of all, if you, if you haven't followed us, we're going to be posting this conversation. And so you'll be able to have access to it, even if you haven't been able to join. So that make sure you let people know that this was a, this has been a great conversation and really important. You've got great takeaways about you know about list making changing your whole life <laughs> from what you do to where you live and uh, and to really get the insight of what it's like both intellectually and and on a, in a feel sense and this is a space of truth and honesty so make sure let your friends know find two people let them know like hey tune into that follow me on instagram I'm always dropping information in this area follow follow Paula, who you can find and, you know, you can find on LinkedIn, you can find Paula on Instagram. Paula is imminently findable. And it's such an important piece to be able to have access. So uh, is there something that you would like to say or let us know about uh there is so much yes. that you do uh you know I, as far as lists go it, it it bleeds into everything i do even as a media trainer so you know i do give a lot of a lot of homework that comes in list form um but if if you go to paularizzo.com slash lists you can get my list making starter kit and we'll be connected uh paularizzo.com slash lists and uh from there you know i share my best list wisdom uh and i'm always coming up with with new things i have a few new courses coming out with linkedin in the fall that uh you know really focus on productivity and our new world of of working and living and how we can do our absolute very best whether you're a manager or you're you know someone who is just starting in your career um so i'm really excited to to present those fantastic and Paula, um, I have listened to Paula. I know what Paula's work looks like. And she is, Paula, I'll just say this straight out. You take everything you do to heart. And not only that, but you also take it to mind and you take it to a space of excellence and giving. And you do it in a way that is very metabolizing and that people can utilize and really bring it from A into life which is so, so, so important. And I thank you very much. We're going to be staying on to do our, um, our shots so that we have shots to be able to uh, post. And remember that my, uh, my signing off today is to always remember that no matter what, no matter where you are in, at this second in time, in yourself, with yourself, in your life, that positive change can happen at any point. You haven't missed it. Don't let go of it. And so now Paul and I are going to take our, 
our photo moments. Paula, ready? are you ready for number one? Ready. Let's do it. Yeah, why Shall not? we take one more? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna have some great choices and I'll be back with you. Hi, I'll be back you. with you shortly. Bye.